Now in this section, we will finally be working to finish the painting. We will do some last minute changes, add some visual noise and some slight color adjustments. Now this is sped up, but hopefully you can see all the actions. Now I did start with some color adjustments to the foreground rocks. And right now I'm adding depth to the rocks with horizontal brush strokes. Change the brush angles so it follows the form. And vary the depth as well as colors. I know I keep mentioning this, but avoid using one solid color. What we want is both warm and cool interacting together. And also we are trying to create a textured feel. So if you do have those texture brushes, now is the time. Now I want to talk a little bit about working freelance and working in-house. In my career so far, I have worked in-house more than I have worked remotely, but there are some differences worth mentioning. Now one of the biggest difference is how you have to deal with uncertainty in freelancing as opposed to feeling of certainty working in-house. When you're working in a company, everything is taken care of from IT issues to daily schedules. So there's a sense of certainty and security and you really have to deal with the uncertainty unless you start climbing up the ladder. Everything is defined by other departments. So you only have to pay attention to art and design. But in freelance, everything you do is uncertain, unfortunately, um, but there are advantages as well. Even getting feedbacks and revisions can be a little bit more difficult and you really have to study the pipeline so you can think ahead at times and it becomes really, really important to constantly plant seeds and always be prepared to be able to take an opportunity when it comes. And you can do that by studying and researching and building visual library. But I would say one of the main advantages in freelancing is the fact that you can control your time and place, which is gonna allow you to do things you wouldn't be able to do if you're working full-time in-house. It's just personal choice. Um, there is no right or wrong. Now, freelance is a bit like running your own restaurant. Um, imagine opening a restaurant today. Okay, it's impossible to know how many customers will be walking in. We can have an educated guess, but the only way to tackle this uncertainty is to be prepared. And that's preparing the ingredients, you know, drinks, tables, chairs, even marketing, and so on. And this is what you want to do as a freelancer. You constantly want to be up to date with any tools and technology. Uh, you want to constantly study, research, building visual library. Uh, you can travel if you can. It's a really good and fun way to study and obviously marketing. It's really important to plant seeds. And in fact, there's a really good Chinese proverb for this. The best time to plant a seed is 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a seed is now. So I keep reminding myself with this. Now, when I study and research, I actually don't just look at artists and designers. I actually learned so much from business owners, investors, uh, musicians, entrepreneurs, obviously, and they have so much useful information for you. You can learn a lot just by analyzing how others are performing in other industries. So it's not just restricted to artists. It's, um, you know, just keep your eyes open. So I'm just working on the mid ground. Um, I started to add some variations of colors. Um, I uh, have added some warmth and because it was looking too flat uh, I started to add some angles to the ground and I'll probably add some more later on. 
I also think it's lacking some of the atmospherics. I just want to see a slight build up of atmosphere so I'll later on I'll be applying a soft brush over it very lightly so it looks a little bit hazy. Now it can also help with the edges as well because it is looking very sharp at the moment so it might help in softening that area in the mid-ground. Now I do like to keep things uh, simple and abstract but if I do want it to look more realistic from here um, I can either spend more time or I can use photos. But what's important here is getting the simple definition in shapes, form, color, value, basically your composition. Okay, your visual elements. Because if you have the composition right, it will take less effort to apply photos. And also that way, when you're using these photos, uh, you are approaching it with more of an objective and intention. I know I've mentioned this as well before, but please make sure your photo is not overpowering your painting because it really ruins it. Unless it's controlled really well, like in the matte paintings you see in the film or games, it can really ruin your image. Now one of the ways you can avoid that is actually by painting on top of the photo. And if you're using image from the internet, be really careful. If you want to stay safe, take your own photos. I mean the phone that you have can take a really good quality photos now, so there isn't really much of an excuse. But if you have to use an image from the internet, just, you know, be careful. No, I'm just rendering the character. It is very rough and suggestive. I'm not going to go into the details. I'm just suggesting it. But one thing I wanted to talk about in terms of characters, when you add characters in the picture, the character is automatically one of your focal points. Okay. As a human being, we like to look at each other. And as soon as you see a character in the scene, that's one of the first thing we will look at. So if you decide to put a character in your image, count that as one of your focal points. Okay, just a rule of thumb. I get asked a lot um, from other professionals who are not in this industry but are wanting to transition about how to make that shift. Um, there was something I was listening to recently that might be useful, very useful. Okay, it was actually an interview between the entrepreneur and the journalist. Um, they were talking about investments. He said that the first 38 to 40 hours of work a week is to make a living. And but the hours you put in on top of the 40 hours, those hours become an investment for yourself. So first 40 hours is for the company and any extra hours is for yourself. Before I made the transition, uh, while I was working at Ford for four years, that's exactly what I did. I did work full time, so the first 40 hours were spent in the company. But I actually started taking classes, um, especially life drawing classes after work. So I started investing in myself, in my skills. And I started meeting other people outside my industry. And that's how I got started in learning. And after four years, I decided to leave the company and spend one whole year, solid year, just learning, experimenting, and experiencing. It's crazy how much you can learn in a year if you don't have any distractions. Now, I hope that was a useful information. Uh, I'm just working on the mid-ground, adding just some rocks. We did some color adjustments and I've extended the light flare. Now, it is coming to an end and we will do a quick recap. So I'll see you in the next part.